Right now, out of every four humans, only one is real. You know, clones that walk around with horns on their heads and tails sticking out of their ears, they look like us. We are at critical mass. A Florida woman will face a trial on charges she murdered her boyfriend last month in Monroe County. A murder in the American heartland is only the beginning. An unbelievable tale of cults, conspiracies, and lizard people. The devil you know. Hi, welcome to Second Earth Alternative. So yeah, ladies and gentlemen, it's it's been a while. And basically I am trying to kind of uh, update everybody and just let everybody know that the channel is gonna go on. I was kind of putting a lot of my energy on a short film that I will be releasing soon. I'm sure some of you have actually gotten a chance to see the trailer that I put up yesterday. I, you know, not everybody loved it, but I think it's all right. What I wanted to talk about was this Vice episode from a show called The Devil That You Know. And basically this show has been kind of making episodes about like Satanists and one particular episode was about like a kind of like a serial killer Satanist who was also a cannibal. And in the latest episode, they started talking about this alien cult, uh, essentially reptilian believers from this woman named Sherry Schreiner. There was so much sickness, like mental health problems in this. And Sherry Schreiner is a predator and like the epitome of evil. So basically the whole episode revolved around the girlfriend, uh, Barbara Rogers, who killed her boyfriend, uh, Steve Minio. And both of them had been part of Sherry Schreiner, little cult, as they called it, the reptilian gatherings that they talked about. This doc series by uh, Vice actually kind of bothered me. You know, I felt like they were kind of painting people who believe in the possibility of reptilian aliens as a type of serial killer, a a as some kind of uh, dangerous concept. My opinion is that the dangers that come with censorship, with this culture of book burning, with the culture of canceling others, I think the track that this leads, I mean, you don't have to look very deep into our history. This usually ends in a form of tyranny. And I think that the dangers of possibly falling into a tyrannical system, for example, it's really hard to challenge China now. So China can do whatever they want to do with Uyghur Muslims. But, you know, let's say you play for the NBA, you can't talk about China in a negative way. Let's say you're a, a big director in Hollywood, you can't talk about China in a negative way, no matter how tyrannical China gets. So this type of a, a concept that we can just stifle people's ideas, it's a really dangerous path, in, in my opinion. And I think that we're kind of heading this way in this episode is, in a sense, kind of showcasing how a certain media company like Vice can frame a certain group of individuals in a really negative way. You know, I mean, literally the documentary is called, as it says here, the devil you know. So I'm just going to read you this article from Den of Geek, and this kind of explains it. Before QAnon infiltrated the collective unconscious of susceptible seekers, Cheryl J. Schreiner used Facebook and YouTube as a breeding ground to groom impressionable minds into followers of an anti-lizard cult. Most of the youngsters who got caught up in the movement never harbored any prejudice against lizards prior to their indoctrination. Some may have even envied their amphibian prowess. But once Schreiner told them about the mind control and body snatching and how they wanted to bring about the rule of the Antichrist, they became radicalized. Radicalized. Wow, people just become radicalized from ideas. And the only radical thing, as I was saying earlier, is people worshiping China. 
That's pretty radical, in my opinion. When you live in a country that's supposed to represent democracy, where we actually can enlist a draft to go to a, a small country like Vietnam for the sake of fighting against communism, and then now we just literally bow down to the biggest communist power that this world has ever seen. That is radical, ladies and gentlemen. So, regarding QAnon, you know, it's, this is not something that I'm going to talk about very often in this channel because there is so much restrictions, even discussing the subject matter. But something that I kind of thought was interesting is that we know that whatever happened with Jeffrey Epstein was real. There was a lot of questions as to how he actually died, you know, with all the prison cameras going off. And so what I found interesting is that the media, oh, and let's not forget about ABC. ABC who actually shelved that Epstein story for over a year while women, you know, girls, I should say, were being victimized, essentially. And uh, I, I just thought it's unbelievable that there's so much pressure from the media. I, I don't know why. I don't know if it's because there are billionaires that are implicated in this, but there seems to be a lot of pressure to demonize the concept of even talking about you know what what Jeffrey Epstein was doing and that and this goes back to QAnon because QAnon is a movement in which the main thread of it is that there is these prostitution rings involving younger children that are headed by elite individuals now I don't believe most of the things that QAnon talks about I don't believe in the whole messiah thing and the fact that they have this huge plan but the main thread, the main idea that there are pedophiles who are in power, well, that is kind of real. And we've actually already gotten a taste of some of what could eventually be, be proof of it. But somehow, QAnon has been demonized so much that we're not even allowed to talk about it. It just seems a little bit strange, doesn't it? And this is the feeling that I get with the whole alien reptilian believers that they're kind of framing it in that same kind of QAnon vibe where you're not really allowed to talk about it and I thought it was so ridiculous that they would actually demonize people who think or believe in reptilian because you know the idea of UFOs is pretty mainstream now I mean for example if you have ever watched uh, Rising from the Hill uh, one of the hosts Sagar and Jetty well Let's listen in to what he has to say about UFOs in one of the most intellectual podcasts that are out there on YouTube. Take a look. The following is a conversation with Sagar Anjedi. He is a DC-based political correspondent, host of The Rising with Crystal Ball, and host of the Realignment podcast with Marshall Kozlov. So where do you land on some of these uh, conspiracy theories? I think most conspiracy theories are wrong. Some are true, and those are spectacularly true. And if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, I, and we don't know which ones. Though. I don't know which ones. That's the problem. I think, oh, well, I mean, look, man, I listened to your podcast. I think I was a huge non-believer in UFOs, and now I've probably never believed more in UFOs. Like, I, yeah. I, I believe in UFOs. Like, yeah. I'm very comfortable being like, not only do I believe in UFOs, like I think we're probably being visited by an alien civilization. Yes. Like, and if you asked me that three years ago, I would've been like, you're out of your fucking mind. Like, what are you talking about? Well, listen to David Fravor. That's yeah. all I have to say. So Lex Friedman is a, is a man who brings in quantum physicists. He's a man who brings mathematicians. And in this particular case, he brings a very prominent host, somebody who used to be a White House correspondent, saying that UFOs used to be crazy, but now i'm pretty certain there's an alien civilization that is visiting us so if we can just go off that particular context that that that, that idea that maybe this is real then who in the world would be piloting those crafts and i think i mean is it a robot is it an interdimensional being is it a ghost I and mean, obviously it's not a ghost but if it was a physical being, let's say like a, an extraterrestrial being, what do they look like? Is it so difficult to believe that they might actually have scales? And um, 
And one of the things that fascinates me about this particular concept is that when you look at it biologically, in biology, we first started with, what was it, like a fish? And I guess from uh, fish, there were amphibians. And then from amphibians, we got to reptiles and then eventually dinosaurs. Now, dinosaurs have scales, reptiles have scales, fish have scales. So out of all those four classification of animals, three out of four have scales. Really, it's, it, it's really only amphibians and mammals that don't have scales. Even some birds, ancient birds in the dinosaur period had scales. So, so I guess what I'm trying to say is that the idea that an extraterrestrial species could have scales is really, there's a lot of biology that kind of supports that concept. Not to mention that all animals are just, they were created by cells. You know, I mean, we had asymmetrical cells and asymmetrical cells, and then the symmetrical cells found a way to kind of organize themselves in a colony. And the colony then had different functions within that colony. And that is essentially the beginnings of something that was just a bunch of cells to being the first functioning animals. Now, of course, you're gonna have to have a protection. Just like a cell has its wall to protect its internal mechanisms, an animal is also gonna have the same thing. And when you think about scales, it's just a whole bunch of plates. And so really, it's just a colony of plates, just in the same way that animals were originally based on a colony of cells. So the idea that an extraterrestrial species would have that exact mechanism where there is a colony of plates around them, it's, it seems very feasible, you know? Some people talk about, well, what about the tongue and the eyes? I mean, cats have different eyes and cats are, are pretty smart. So none of this really is ingrained in the human biology. And eventually those animals might eventually stand up because biologists have concluded that standing up is actually the most energy efficient way. And given the fact that the human brain consumes more energy than any other organ in the human body, that's why people assume a lot because assume is a way of conserving energy and the brain takes up so much energy that it really, it requires a unique physiological structure, one that actually maximizes energy while allowing the blood to properly cool, because if you're on four legs, you actually heat up a lot more. Well, this is just, like I said, a natural derivative of the environment. This, this is what happens when you get a certain environment. So to think that an alien species can look like a reptile, which is one of the most basic, fundamental aspects of all the classification of animals that literally comes from a fish, that, that a fish had scales, just like a reptile has scales. And, and to think that an alien might actually look like that means that you're somehow a crazy nut crack pipe serial killer. And I say serial killer because literally this docuseries, The Devil You Know, started by talking about a cannibalistic serial killer. And now they're trying to say that alien people, that people who believe in aliens are, are have anything to do with that. This is what I'm talking about framing. That it's, it doesn't allow for the nuances of the conversation. So, going back to the discussion about dragons, about reptilians, you know, we also have to consider world religions. I mean, you look at the Dogon tribe that happened to know that there was a serious B star that was recorded by a French anthropologist as far back as 1920. They didn't just say that there was a that their uh, gods came from the Sirius B, which is the second star. They also said that there was a third star that they called Potolo. The word Po means seed, talking about dragons. <laughs> the word Po means seed. And that third star just happened to be a white dwarf, which was only discovered in 1994 by NASA because they were able to look at the solar perturbation. And this is something that is, in my opinion, absolutely phenomenal. That uh, ancient West African tribe who claimed that their gods came from the sky and, and gave them metallurgical, mathematical, and even knowledge regarding what to eat, or what plants uh, you can eat. 
I find that unbelievable that this West African tribe can nail the exact solar environment that is occurring from a star that you can't even look with the telescope talking about the, the white dwarf, the third star. So their gods were amphibian beings. They said they were frog-faced gods who came down from the sky. And it was weird because the Hopi Indians had a story about ant people. And the ant people were people who dug caves for them, for them to escape some cataclysm that happened. Now, the ant people, it wasn't just the ant people, there was also, the, if you look at the Kachina dolls, there was also the reptilian, the lizard people. And that's kind of weird. So they got lizard people, they have ants people, they have these caves that they said their gods built that allowed them to survive a catastrophe. If you look at Zoroastric text, Zoroastrianism, it's really interesting that they also talk about fire coming from the sky in the long winter. And if you go to Cappadocia, Turkey, they have all these amazing underground cities in which archaeologists to this day still do not know how such engineering marvel was built. I mean, we're talking about caves with thousands of air shafts that could house tens of thousands of people. And, and there was no true under, like reason for it. It's like nobody could understand the motive behind creating the, the caves. What I found even more interesting is that we know that there's a comet that hit Greenland. In this comet that hit Greenland around 12,800 years ago, it left all kinds of debris all over the world. Now, when you look at the map of where this debris fell, well, there were cometary fragments that hit right next to New Mexico, the Hopi land, and south of Turkey, right next to the, where the Cappadocia caves were built. So both of those cultures talk about some sky being, some god that helped them build these caves to escape a long winter. And there are fragments, actual commentary fragments in those areas. So you see why I'm starting to connect the pieces that this is probably not human culture. That there's probably, I mean, what human culture would know that comet is about to strike? I mean, this is a, how do you say, it's an extraterrestrial phenomenon that would probably only be known by extraterrestrials themselves. Looking at Quetzalcoatl, right? It's funny because when you read about Quetzalcoatl, they also call it the cult of the feathered serpents. The cult, I mean, they love that word dramatically throughout Mesoamerica. So this is a, a cult, as they claim, of a feather serpent that happened in all of Mesoamerica. But as you read in the bottom, I found this really interesting. It says here, he was the god who met with an ant. Wait, 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 what? He was the god who met with an ant. Wait, wait, didn't we just talk about how the Hopi Indian also had ant people who helped him with his caverns and that ant people or ant friend literally translates to Anunnaki. And now you're telling me that the Aztecs had a lizard person who actually met with an ant to provide humans with their first maze to plant. The same exact story that the Dogon people talked about when there are these beings who gave knowledge of farming and, and how to pick out certain plants. So to connect all of this, there's nothing crazy about this. I would say this is a very astute observation. Uh, it's something that requires knowing different cultures, knowing our history, knowing that an asteroid actually hit. To try to take individuals like myself in the audience of this channel who believe that there might be an alien species, there might be something that's piloting the craft, and to associate us to some kind of conspiracy, radicalized, serial killing individual to frame it like that, it's so irresponsible. It is so vicious and malicious. And I just have to stand here and defend these individuals. So I'm just going to kind of end this with a drive and talk. So as I was saying in the very end, uh, talking about the extraterrestrials, it's just all the knowledge I've been giving you regarding, you know, the Dogon tribe, the Hopi Indians, the Zoroastric texts. You know, they all seem to point that there was some kind of God that came from the sky that essentially helped humanity and gave them all this knowledge. Uh, and that this God may have been reptilian looking. That's why we have the dragon 
as one of the most common symbols in human history. Now also consider that the dragon is specifically described as being associated with coming from other worlds. The dragon is associated with intelligence. The dragon uh, can speak telepathically. Uh, and it's also associated with caves. You know, think about how Zeus struck all the titans to the underground world. And then lastly, it's also associated with gold. You know, and this comes to mind Zachariah Sitchin and his whole translations of cuneiform essentially claiming that we were created, meaning humanity was created to excavate gold. So is that all a coincidence? You know, I know Carl Jung had his own theory about this kind of like archetype universal primal symbol that all humans shared that we're all from some kind of monkey ancestry uh, essentially afraid of snakes and in a way it kind of makes sense because we are there are experiments that show humans are inherently afraid of snakes but it doesn't explain all the other specificity that i was talking about regarding dragons and i think carl Jung lived in a time where there was no knowledge that other planets existed in our solar system that resembled earth so in a way it was a lot more it was, it was a lot simpler to kind of internalize his theory because he had actually been going off the exact same evidence that i'm talking about the evidence that there are dragons all over the world if you read his uh, red book he specifically talks about this. And outside of the idea of collective consciousness, I think he just kind of believed that there was a mental construct that was responsible for all these universal renderings of the dragons all over the world. I would argue that the dragon is more common than God itself uh, in terms of world religion. Because I honestly have not discovered a single religion that does not have some kind of serpentine godlike creature. I mean, I think even the Eskimos have that. But then when you look at religions like Buddhism, well, Buddhism doesn't necessarily believe in God. So I, I really do believe that the dragon is actually a more common motif than God itself in world religions. So I think these are the types of evidence, or if you want to call it evidence, the different concepts that are essentially leading me to think that this UFO, these things that people are seeing, these things that are being admitted by the Pentagon, that are being admitted by the Navy, that these UFOs are essentially being piloted by something that might resemble extraterrestrial with scales, uh, lizard people, as was discussed by so many different cultures. And uh, it just kind of makes me really upset to see the community of uh, UFO believers and alien believers because it, it was such a hurdle to get to this point, you know, it, to, to get to the point where UFOs are being accepted. And it just makes me sad that they're being demonized so much, you know. I don't know why. I don't know why the media tries to make these people look like they're crazy because to me it's very logical uh, to think that, you know, something's piloting those crafts. I mean, I don't know how else to say that. We, we you know, we, it's not gonna look like, it's probably not gonna look, look like humans. I think that theory in itself is almost more extreme than the belief that it looks like a reptile. And just to kind of finish off uh, this episode, something that I found kind of like a double standard that they were doing. If you actually look at this individual that they were kind of highlighting to try to make it seem like Steve was crazy, and this is actually a friend of his who basically said that Steve was this like sexless like person who he surprised he would ever have a relationship with. Maybe I should just show the clip real quick. One of the things his mother told me was that he was very, very shy around girls. When a mother says that, I, I feel like it's, it's kind of a code for he didn't know how to talk to girls and he didn't go out a lot. When he got with Barbara, I was very shocked, you know, and I, I almost felt like, well, if he's with Barbara, there's gotta be more to this story because a normal person wouldn't get into a relationship with Steve. I felt that there has to be an agenda. In the documentary, they kind of just lay it out 
what Sherry Shrine is saying regarding reptilians almost to kind of make a point this is what these people who believe in reptilians are like and hello everybody I'm Sherry Shriner so this appears to be like clone number four of Barb Rogers that I know of clearly you can see she's morphing she's synthetic look at the palms folks look at the palm of her hands from wrist look at her wrist her face is melting it's very blurry her hand morphs in and out in all of her pictures Look at her pinky, this is the first thing I notice. And then look at the length of this palm of her hand. Now this clearly is a 42 year old woman, but it's not the one that was dating Steve Moneo, much older looking woman. Look at these pictures, look at the contrast. These are the ones she had with Steve when online. These are her mug shots when she was arrested. Two different people, folks. This is earlier this year with Steve. This is the mug shot after she was arrested. I mean, come on folks, these are two different people. The one dating Steve, the one arrested. What's going on here? And, you know, if you follow this channel, you know that we don't believe in reptilian videos. We don't believe in these shape-shifting videos. So, in a way, I felt like this is another insult to the believers, so to speak. And it was also the double standard. It was the sheer hypocrisy that they would try to paint these UFO believers as people who just believe that these videos are real. All the while, the guy that they highlighted, the friend, to try to show how Steve was crazy, well, look what he's saying about the girlfriend. And I saw, I remember seeing the pictures of her, and I remember him telling me he's the happiest he's ever been. And I remember just looking at her pictures and, and finding it very odd. I think it was the darkening of the eyes, the just the, the long face, very emotionless. The photos, it just it didn't, it didn't sit right with me. And I was like, she looks like a witch. That was my first take. She looks evil. A buddy of mine who's not a conspiracy theorist, okay, and I, and I find him to be a fairly logical person, also said she looks like a witch. I'm like, yeah, you know, there's something off. But in, in a way, I was happy for Steve. You know, that somebody has similar views to him and somebody can relate to him. So I was happy for him. But I always knew in the back of my head that something was amiss. So he can call her a witch? Even to go so far as to say that his friend who doesn't believe in UFOs, who, who's a skeptic, also thought that she looked like a witch? So he's allowed to judge somebody like that and, and make that type of commentary. But then we're just supposed to take this very ending as if like UFO fanatics are crazy? So. I hope you see my, my points and the double standard that they're trying to pull. So I think I said enough regarding all the different topics that, you know, I wanted to discuss regarding how the media is framing UFO believers and people who believe in extraterrestrials. And uh, if you like this format, uh, please let me know in the comment section. And if you have not checked out the trailer for this short film that I'm about to put out, it's actually a long short film sounds like an oxymoron it, it's like a long format short film so it's like almost like a 30 minute short film so if you want to check out the trailer i'll leave that at the very end and once again thank you for following second earth this is felipe speaking signing out